Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar uh, which is focused on a peer cup design for bridges. Uh, let me please introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Jan Valicek and I am a consultant at Idea Statica and I am here with my colleague Petra Komarkova, product engineer. Good morning. And we would like to talk about, uh, as I mentioned, uh, peer cup design using our application Idea Statica Detail. But at the beginning, you are welcome to ask a question. So on the right hand side, you can see a questionnaire like a window for writing questions. So please, during the session, uh, write anything you want and we'll try to answer your questions at the end of the webinar. If there won't be enough time, we'll send you replies via email. So about the agenda, uh, what we will show you, as I mentioned, the webinar is focused on peer cup design for bridges, but actually the same workflow can be applied also for building structures. So for example, if you have a, a really long span trusses and you need, them to, you need to support them, you can use the similar workflow. So first, uh, there will be some introduction about the uh, peer cap uh, problematics, then uh, Petra will show you the preparation of the models and uh, how to get uh, the important uh, loading data from other software. Then you will see the workflow in Idea Statica detail. Uh, after the workflow, you will see the results and the interpretation of the results, and then some general recommendations for the peer cap design. So that's everything from my side, and now I'll give a word to Petra, and she will go through the peer cup with the software within the software. Okay, thank you for the word, Honza. So I will <clears throat> close the camera and share my screen. So <clears throat> yeah, here we are. So peer cap design. Uh, design of bearing is a part of the bridge design, as you probably know. Uh, it's important that uh, when modeling a bridge structure, the behavior shall be uh, modeled in such way that the internal forces and moments acting on a superstructure, piers and bearings will correspond to reality. Uh, uh, the, the last tip or recommendation which uh, I would like to say is that uh, the workflow of bridge design is supposed to be done in opposite way than its construction. Uh, as you know, um, from people from construction side uh, need uh, the drawings, the design of the substructure. So there is a time pressure and uh, engineers uh, starts with the superstructure. So uh, that's why the, uh, the time pressure. And uh, we will bring you or we bring you the solution, how to uh, design, code check uh, this kind of uh, detail, pure cap, uh, in, as a quick and uh, reliable solution. Let's move to practical example. So this is the preparation part. Before we start in Idea Statica detail, we need to uh, have a complete model of the bridge. In this case, it is three span continuous box girder bridge. It's made of pre-stressed concrete. You can see the pre-stressing tendons uh, on this slide. Uh, and cross section below the longitudinal section. The height of the section is three meters and it's constant along the whole length of the bridge. Maybe I will show you uh, the model of the bridge. So for example, uh, I did it in Midas Civil. This is our bridge. Here you can see the supports. The bridge is supported by um, 
pot bearings and in this case we will focus on this part the support number two which is fixed support located <clears throat> So our uh, substructure uh, could look like uh, like it's in in the in this slide. So this is the superstructure. Uh, here we have pod bearings, uh, then bearing pedestals, and uh, the pier cap, and the pier itself. The geometry of this peer cap was based on some national recommendation or codes as well as the reinforcement. So I think right now is the time to uh, look uh, into ideostatica detail or to get to the actual uh, modeling. So I have launched detail I'm going to create a new project. <clears throat> we will get this uh, dialog. Uh, as first, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we are going to code check according to Eurocode. But in this software, there is implemented ACI, American Code. So uh, you can um, uh, perform the analysis according to this code. And of course, um, maybe I will show you you can switch uh, into uh, preferable units so if you design according to ACI you can um, have default units uh, imperial so you will switch it here but I will leave a uh, metric system because uh, we are going to deal with Eurocode so uh, here we set the concrete and reinforcement class and concrete cover I'm not going to use any template I will use this option general input because I would like to show you the process how to import from DXF file. So I will click on this button. Um, I have to find the DXF file. This is my uh, prepared DXF file. And here I will choose uh, the edge. So for example, I will click on this edge, then I click consecutive outline and that's how I uh, I got the geometry into the program, into the software. I just need to modify the thickness, it will be two meters. Let me switch to real 3D view to have a look at the this uh, detail. I, would, I will continue with import. Uh, I'm going to insert bearing pedestals. So the left one, I will set the thickness. This time it will be 860. And now the right one. So click on it, outline, okay. and the same thickness. So this is the concrete part and now I'm going to model the pot bearings, the bridge bearings. So I'm not going to use any import function but I will add new entity uh, in our program. So it's going to be a bearing plate and this bearing plate will be will uh, simulate the, the bearing itself. So let's modify the dimensions. The width will be sorry 700 millimeters, the thickness uh, 145 millimeters. Of course I need to maybe I will switch to model view and I need to uh, place the this plate on the bearing pedestal. So I will do it by position. So master member will be W2. Let's put it on edge number one and set the right dimension. 
Now I can simply copy this bearing plate and just switch to W3. There is only one missing in this model and it is um, support of this uh, detail. You can see that there is a little warning that structure cannot be calculated because it's statically overdeterminate. So I will add support, it will be line support on edge number seven and it's going to be a fixed support. Um, the length of this uh, pier is not the real length of the pier, it could be much higher, uh, but for this purposes, for the purposes of the calculation, uh, it's sufficient to have around uh, two meters. As you will see in the results that in this area there is uh, nothing happening or it's not as interesting as uh, here in the in the neighboring of the bearings and this narrowing. So the geometry is done and we can move to loads. We will have three load cases, so I will add another two. Uh, we are not going to calculate them, we will calculate with the actual combination which will we create in a minute. I will click or switch to load impulses, uh, choose the LC1. This state or this case will represent that load. <clears throat> so I will add a load impulse in a form of point load and the value will be set on 4580. The same load will be on the right side, so I copy this entity and switch to bearing plate number two. Uh, these loads uh, were obtained from the global analysis. If I switch to, to this um, software or model, uh, I read the, the reaction from the dead load or the pre-stressing load and the moving load, as you will see in a minute. So we have the first case, the second uh, case will represent tangent reaction due to secondary pre-stress, secondary effects of pre-stress. So this is plus 90 kilonewtons. I will copy this and switch to the uh, first plate and the third load case will represent effects due to moving load so it will be negative uh, 2480 and of course the same will be on the right part. These values uh, are in characteristic um, values, so now we need to create the combinations. We will create three combinations. By means of this blue pen I will set the combination rule. So for ULS check we will have a partial factor 1.35, one for pre-stressing and 1.35 for moving load. This combination C2 will be characteristic, so zeros for uh, each state, uh, forgive me, uh, ones for uh, each state and quasi-permanent. Uh, this combination uh, doesn't consider uh, moving or variable load. And I just realized that I forgot to set that this load case number three is variable load. So we are done with the combination and we can move to reinforcement. I will show you the 
this slide so this is our geometry and this is the, the output of topologic optimization this is the um, let's say a response of uh, the structure to the acting loads so the principal pressures or stresses compression stresses will go in this direction and here uh, a tie occurs so this is um, like um, manual for us how to or where to place the reinforcement so by input edit button i will uh, enter the reinforcement part and as uh, geometry i will define the reinforcement by import from dxf and also by adding entities right here so first let's start with the reinforcement from dxf you can see that the reinfor reinforcement is drawn here um, it was drawn in millimeters so here are millimeters and simply i click on this clicked on select and that's how i get this uh, reinforcement into detail and i will continue and click ok i will get this a group of bars in in the in the software uh, it's quite useful to rename this um, group of bars for example for uh, something which is more comprehensive like uh, tie t1 or incline and and so on um, after the import you can see that this software automatically generate the diameter of this for example of this tie one that it's 20 millimeters and this is because of the fact that uh, when I was drawing this reinforcement, I set the global thickness of this polyline in, in the AutoCAD on 20. And of course, um, we have this mandrel diameter here as well. And you can draw the perpendicular angle or the right angle but then you need to set the mandrel here or you can draw it in, in uh, AutoCAD. So the, these were little tips for, for the importing. So after the import, you need to set the number of layers and some um, specification about the anchorage. I will switch to real 3D view and show you that we have, right now we have only one one bar here and we need to set it for the actual number of the bars so we will have 14 uh, bars of the reinforcement then we'll, i will switch to second group this one and set it on 14 as well and maybe do some modification. I'm sorry for the uh, delay. I'm just looking for the right uh, document. <laughs> okay then we will we'll have we have the same one on the right side and then we have maybe i will switch to model view this kind of reinforcement uh, we have 16 millimeters diameter here and four pieces because it's a smaller member and four pieces from the, this point i would like to show you how to create 
the reinforcement here in detail. So by clicking uh, on this blue plus button, add new entity, I'm going to choose group of bars. And I would like to generate the reinforcement <clears throat> in the peer cap in the horizontal direction. So let's have 20 millimeters diameter, five layers. Then I will switch the shape definition from polyline to on outline or opening edge. And I might set this to seven layers as well and uh, the right distance. And here I need to um, modify the edge. So it will be edge number three. And since we have, I will switch to real 3D. Since we have already defined this tie, this tie one, we need to shift it a little bit down. So I will switch to model view and do some settings by means of position on edge and set the user value instead of cover on 150. So it shifted a little bit uh, here. And um, I'm going to specify the, the anchorage type and it will be perfect bond. If I click on different type of the groups, a group, you can see that it was automatically cut it uh, based on the cover parameter. I will show you how it looks like in 3D view. This is the mark of the perfect bond. And why we are assuming this bond? Because in reality, uh, this horizontal reinforcement will be in a shape of U maybe, and it will be perfectly anchored. So that's why we can assume that there here is perfect bond. Let's move to different or another group of bars and it will be also horizontal reinforcement in this part of the peer cap. So maybe I will speed it up a bit. So we don't need uh, 20 millimeters. So let's change it for 16, perfect bond on, on uh, both ends and this will be the same. And here we need to set, uh, set it for 1000 and, um, 150 to have it a little bit down. So again, it will be automatically generated according to this shape. Let's um, define the vertical reinforcement. So another group of bars. Now we'll, we'll have uh, 25 layers uh, this will be the spacing of the of the bars and now we are going to change for edge number four this will be from 16 profile and five layers and here it will be from settings and one more uh, adjustion uh, we are going to extend it up so it will look like like this then we can add some stirrups into the bearing pedestals so another group of bars <clears throat> we will have this kind of settings 
let's choose this option uh, standard loop which could represent the stirrup and change for master entity and write um, edge the same will be uh, in this pedestal of course so i will copy this and set for the right concrete member or entity okay and now we are almost finishing the reinforcement so let's let's uh, insert another or let's say the last group of bar and this will be for for the pier itself I, maybe I will change this to see where it is actually placed. So this kind of uh, reinforcement. Of course, I will change the anchorage type for perfect bond and continuous bar because it will continue further. And Position on edge will be also set as follows. Okay, so now we have we just we have defined these bars. So this is how it looks like this is quite dense reinforcement uh, of course we are missing some other um, group of bars in the pier but to save some time uh, I would like to uh, move on so in the next step uh, we are going to perform the check since we have defined geometry loads and reinforcement uh, again, to save some time, I have pre-calculated this example, so I would like to show you the results. So as you know, um, uh, ULS check uh, is based on non-linear calculations, so it, uh, it might take some time. In this case, it's a few minutes, but we, we are short of time right now, so it's better to uh, present the results as it is. So after the calculation, you can immediately see uh, whether your, um, what uh, check was uh, passed and what failed. For example, uh, ULS check is uh, okay, it's fine, but uh, we have some problems in SLS check stress limitation. I would like to talk about it a little bit later. Let's focus on uh, ULS assessment. So if you switch to strength tab, you can see uh, the utilization of the concrete or maybe better uh, graphic representation is um, compressive concrete stress stresses. So you can see in this window that the huge concentration is obviously under the uh, under the bearings in both uh, bearing pedestals and of course some concentration uh, occurs here uh, since there is a change of this geometry or abrupt change of the of the geometry so this is uh, stresses here are stresses in the concrete. If I want to see stresses in the reinforcement, I need to click on reinforcement and I can see uh, here is the utilization. Uh, I'm going to switch to stresses in the bars. So as it was assumed here is the most stressed bar. But um, if you look at the, at at the percentage and the values, uh, the 
the reinforcement is not uh, utilized as much so we could optimize this and maybe um, the design smaller diameter. A quite useful tab is this um, auxiliary because you can see if you click on tensor concrete values you can see the principal stresses uh, and strains. So we have we have seen this uh, picture before but uh, for example, this uh, this picture, which represents the tensile stresses, which needs to be um, tra uh, transformed um, via reinforcement bars, because the concrete cannot uh, bear this huge kind of tension. Also, uh, there are direction of the stresses. So, and, and you can see uh, where is this uh, huge concentration of the pressure, where are the uh, huge tangents, so you can presume the occurrence of cracks as well. So let's go back to summary tab. I might, or maybe str strength tab, concrete and I will switch off the reinforcement and draw the mesh of the finite elements. Here you can see quite dense mesh. Um, the concentration of the of the pressure occurs only only here or in this really small uh, element. If we go to stress tab, which is um, a requirement or stress limitation is requirement for SLS check, you can see where is this place which uh, failed or not satisfied the condition. Uh, we are away or uh, behind the limit. But only here uh, in this really small area. I have um, pre-calculated the same example but with different um, mesh size. I will show you. This is, it, this is the same example but if I switch on the draw mesh you can see that it's uh, coarse. And uh, as you can see we are now the stress limitation uh, check is okay and um, there are no concentration of the stress. So this is a way how to how to deal with this kind of problem that um, this um, solution is maybe um, more accurate in terms of ULS check but for SLS check, it's better to have a coarser mesh because you can avoid this huge concentration of stresses and by this step of having this kind of mesh, in a way you calculate or you check the, the average values. Also, there is another option how to avoid this problem and that would be to make this corner uh, in a better shape or something which is rounded maybe or some haunched. And then you could allow the stress to flow continuously to the pier. So this is another tip. Um, let's switch to SLS uh, project and I am going to show you a crack width check. As you can see we can calculate the crack width and um, we, we can presume where the cracks can occur. So it's a very uh, useful tool for the engineers because 
they will know where to put the reinforcement and where the cracks could occur. So that would be uh, all for the interpretation results. Uh, I would like to mention that we, there is this uh, option bill of material. So if you if you reinforce your concrete member perfectly or according to your idea and you are um, happy with it, you can export this reinforcement into DXF file and after that you can modify it, for example. Also, you have the complete uh, bill of material in terms of weight, length and so on. <clears throat> Maybe um, one thing, I forgot to tell you that if you want to calculate with coarser mesh, you need to do some adjustment because this mesh, this very dense one, is uh, according to default settings. If you need or if you must or need to uh, change it, you are in the check, in the navigator, you go to setup and here uh, you look for mesh settings and here we have multiplier of default mesh size. I changed it for number three. So it means that the size of the finite element is eventually higher. Last thing which I would like to show you uh, in our software is that we have report uh, functionality you can uh, you can uh, create your report it's uh, editable you can put more pictures or figures uh, everything what you need to in your report and once you are done with the modifications here you can exported it to, into doc or pdf file and uh, attach it to your project documentation. So I would like to show you uh, or say you one recommendation at, at the end of this practical example and it's about peer cap design. It's a 3D task, we all know it and uh, we all or usually we need to do some simplification because uh, modeling in 3D is quite complex and time consuming etc. So in Idea Static and Detail we offer you uh, to, uh, to solve your problems as a 2D task but there is this recommendation uh, to preserve the safe design and reliable it is necessary to provide a dense reinforcement in the second direction. In our case, it's the direction Y, as you can see on the uh, on this slide, because um, from numerical point of view, we have only 2D 2D problem. So I think that's uh, all um, for the um, practical example. So um, thank you very much, Petra. Uh, we have quite a lot of time behind uh, behind us. So we have some questions from our users, if we can answer that. So if any one of you has another question, please write it to us or you can uh, write it to the questionnaire after the webinar. But one user asks if we can uh, input horizontal forces in the model, because we've shown only the vertical forces. Okay, uh, I might show you in the example. Maybe it will be better. So, this one loads. Uh, of course, uh, my example was um, quite simple. I had a symmetrical load and only only one combination for ULS check, but in reality you would have more combination. Uh, if you have um, horizontal force, uh, I would uh, maybe I will show it on the load case number three. 
I'm in load case number three, I go to load impulses and I will I would add another entity, point load, direction, direction X, of course, and I wouldn't add it into this um, bearing plate, but I would like to insert it uh, or let it act it uh, directly to the concrete part. So no device, uh, no transmitting device and let me switch to WT and uh, place the force somewhere here, maybe uh, on the border between the bearing pedestal and the peer cap itself. So that will be point number five. And uh, by effective radius, for example, two point, uh, 0 0.2 meters, yeah, that would that could work. Uh, by this radius, I will guarantee the transmission of the load to the concrete. Because if there would be a zero, it would mean that this huge load is concentrated into one element, into one finite element, and a huge uh, stress concentration would appear here. So that's why the radius is here. And of course, the value will be would be smaller like 500 for example okay so, thank you uh, for the answer i think it's it's uh, okay for the user uh, we can also uh, add uh, line loads and uh, surface loads so there are many options in our software and another user asks how we or how the software deal with the concentrated pressure under the bearing uh concentrated pressure Okay, um, so let me switch to, for example, this um, this view. So we can see that, or maybe better is this this one. We can see that here is um, concentrated pressure in under the bearings, and here, um, as you can see uh, from the results, uh, it is not considered in idea static detail yet but our development team is working on it and you can looking for you can look forward to to this improvement so right now we can say that we are on the safe side uh thank you and uh, there is also another question from our user he's asking where we are going to have a 3d version of our software so as petra said now we are fine tuning the 2d version and uh, after the all is tuned we may come with the 3d version but we don't have it scheduled yet so please stay tuned uh, watch our webinars and you will you will know uh when it's going to be uh, uh released but now we have 2d you can solve all 2d uh, tasks all 2d details with some recommendation how handle with the 3d behavior of the model so uh for now uh i will switch i will take the presenter uh, we have some other questions but we will uh, answer it individually because we are running out of the time so i hope you see my screen yes we can see thank you so please uh uh, this is the webinar is at the end so if you have any ideas how to improve our software let us know we are happy for that you can write to our help desk you can write to the questions here or to the questionnaire uh, I would also like to mention our recorded webinars uh, our two last webinars were focused on uh, uh, practical uh, designs from our customers uh, one of those was uh, Buttersea power station in London uh, it was focused on the steel connections and there was also an example how to design cast in situ wall uh, using idea statica detail so check our website check our youtube uh, because this is our last webinar before a summer uh, holiday summer months and we will be back here with webinars in september and i would also like to ask you uh, for a short survey after the webinar uh, it helps us a lot to improve our webinar so please uh, spend 30 seconds of your uh, valuable time to fill our form just how happy are you are with our webinar and 
yeah, we will very appreciate it. So this is all from us for today. So we are looking forward for the next sessions of webinars in the second half of the year, and we wish you uh, we wish you a lot of luck with your work and uh, and calculate yesterday's estimates. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.